Now it's time to look into some of the productivity improvements in Leopard. And we're going to start in Mail. It's now richer and more full-featured than ever. Now the first thing you're going to notice in Mail is when you create a new message, you now have the opportunity to create stationary, to use stationary as a template to make your email look that much better as you send it out. And there's a whole series of different templates with Apple's flair for all sorts of things from announcements to photo summaries and all that kind of stuff. Now one nice thing that they've added here is the ability to include drop zones. Now let me show you how they work. So let's say I'm going to send an email out which has got details of a vacation that we were on including some photos. Just like we have in iMovie and iDVD, we have these placeholders called drop zones. So I can take a photograph from my iPhoto library or from my desktop, just drop them in and then they will be sent along with the email. So we have the ability to format and create much more attractive emails very easily. And of course, this will improve over time as they add more templates for us to use. The next improvement that they've done is they've added a lot of productivity. One of the things about email is it's the application we probably spend the most time in. And most things start when we're in an email. For example, somebody sends you an email saying, Steve, your car is due for an oil change. And then you say, I, just, I should make a note or put it on my calendar right from the email. So now we have the ability to do that. I click on note and then I put in the critical information. Steve, you have an oil change due. So I can make this into just a static note or I can choose to make it a to-do. If I click on to-do, I can add extra information. I can give it a due date, a priority, and I can even insert it in a calendar. This gives me a lot of control over my entire flow of work because as tasks come in an email, I can convert them into notes and into to-dos so that I make sure they get done appropriately. It all begins in email, and I like that. The next thing I want to show you are something called data detectors, and they are probably my favorite feature in mail right now. Data detectors are the operating system recognizing recognizing strings of data and then giving us options to deal with it appropriately. For example, here's an invitation to a dinner and there's a couple of core pieces of information here. There's an address and there's also a time and a date. If I move my mouse over top of the address, you can see that it marquees and I can actually select it by right clicking and the operating system will give me some options of what to do with this data. It recognizes it as an address by the data that's in that string of text. And then it says, what do we do with addresses? Well, we put them into our address book or we look them up in maps. So here I can add this to an existing contact, create a new contact based on this address, or show me a map. If I choose show map, it automatically launches Google Maps for me, finds the address, and shows me exactly where to go. So instead of having to copy this, paste it, open up Google, go to Google Maps, paste it in, and then do all of that kind of parsing of information myself, the operating system recognizes this string of characters as an address and then lets me deal with it in a variety of ways that are most common for that type of information. Similarly, let's take a look at this date. Now, it, it doesn't even say November 14th or anything like that. It just says this coming Tuesday at 4 p.m. Yet the operating system is smart enough to recognize that this is an appointment and it'll create a calendar event for me. So I can cl click on create a new iCal event and it then says, okay, you've got this appointment coming up this next Tuesday. It looks at the date today and then finds the next Tuesday. And it also looks at the rest of the document and says, oh, here's the location and puts it all that information in and allows us to then import it directly into our calendar application. Now, this is very intelligent stuff. I've actually used a clipping tool in Outlook for a long time, which will actually clip out an address for me and put it into my address book but it's nowhere near as intelligent. I had to pay for it, and it only does about a fifth of what the data detectors do in the Mac OS. Apple has long had a wonderful integration between their applications and their operating system, and we've shown you many examples of that in past shows. Seeing additional integration between Mail and the other productivity applications should come as no surprise, although it is a welcome addition. Now that we've looked at work applications, time for a little fun. One of Apple's best kept secrets is iChat. This is Apple's chat software that works as both a text, audio, and a video application. And the fact that nearly every new Mac has built-in iSight cameras makes iChat an incredible application. And they've added a whole series of new features, including multiple logins for your multiple personalities. That's a good idea. Yes, it is.
It has tab chatting, allowing you to organize your chats. It has animated icons for those of you who absolutely have to say it with a dancing penguin. But my favorite features are built in to the video side of iChat. Let me launch my video camera and show you. Now the built-in iSight camera is excellent for doing just straight chat, just straight video conferencing back and forth. The quality is exceptional. It does a wonderful job of compression and you can see and have a nice engaging chat with somebody on the other end. But now the fun starts when we look under the video menu and we see that we now have video effects. Now some of these effects come to us from our photo booth application and other ones are new. So, for example, we can make our video chat look pop art. Now, the person at the other end is going to be seeing all of these effects that we apply. And, of course, they are going to be rolling in laughter as you do the incredible squeeze and you have a conversation with them. How are they going to keep a straight face while you talk to them like this? But my favorite new features are the backdrops. Now, with the backdrops, we can actually chroma key out the background and put ourselves in almost any situation. And here's how it works. Let's do the roller coaster. In this case, we've got a video background, and we can use our own video, and if we don't want to use the preset ones, I click on video, and it says, get out of the picture. Okay. Oh, look. One of the crew left a chocolate bar. That's pretty good. Oh, whoa, whoa. So now our buddy at the other end says, look at Steve. He's on a roller coaster. So you can put yourself in parties. You can use your own video. You can find some great video clips on the web to be able to put yourself in almost any situation. And if you need that extra voice of authority instead of doing a video, you can just add a backdrop, which kind of can give you a, you know what? I'm telling you exactly what's happening, and you better listen to me because I know everything. <laughs> and you can add... If the preset backdrops aren't good enough, you can add your own. Here's the photo we were looking at earlier, which is basically a picture that I took up in Yellowknife, and now I can look cold. I'm like the weatherman giving you the weather report. It's not all just fun, though. There's also some business applications. So if I go under the file menu here, I can choose to share either a file or a photo with something called iChat Theater. Now, what this does is it allows us to take a presentation or to take a document and to share it with people over the Internet as a chat application. So I can then open this up and it basically opens up the presentation. So this can be a keynote presentation, a PowerPoint presentation, it can be a PDF document. I can take that document and then if I invite someone into a video chat, I can share it with them over the internet. And I can do a presentation using the chat application. This is a really powerful way to share content for a business application. So now the person at the other end is actually getting this presentation delivered to them over the net. Now, iChat seems like all fun, but it, as you can see, can be a very valuable business tool. However, I would recommend going easy on the photo booth effects if you're meeting face to face with a client in iChat. Blogs, podcasts, streaming video, you can find it all on our new website. Check out dototech.com.